Cara, from the University of uh, Seville, Universidad de Sevilla. Uh, I'm very glad uh, for two reasons. Because he's, he's here, he accepted our invitation to, to come with us. Uh, but also he, is my, uh, he was my supervisor uh, of my, my, my thesis, my PhD supervisor. So uh, very glad. Thank you very much for, for, for being with us uh, again, Enrique. So uh, he, is to, he is going to talk uh, about uh, uh, on the control of the Navier-Stokes equations and related systems. OK? El puntero, Paco. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Paco, and uh, it's a great uh, honor for me to be here, of course. Thank you very much to the uh, scientific committee for the invitation, and thank you also for the nice work that they are doing uh, to the organizing committee. Uh, I, I will try to speak a little bit about the control uh, of the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, I will try to uh, uh, avoid all uh, technical results and to explain as uh, clear as I can the, the situation and uh, trying to convince you of the uh, interest that has uh, uh, this kind of problems. Uh, and I will follow the, the plan that is here. I, uh, First, I will speak a little bit about the origins of the Navier-Stokes, uh, the meaning of the Navier-Stokes equations, and also the regions and uh, meaning of control. And in the last part of the, of the talk, I will try to present uh, some new results uh, concerning some, uh, uh, in some sense, uh, non-standard uh, control problems for these equations. So there are two key words in, in the talk. The first one is Navier-Stokes equations. And uh, let me explain a little bit uh, the origin and the meaning of the, the system. Uh, in general terms, we can say that the, the, the Navier-Stokes equations are the equations of fluids. They describe the behavior of a fluid in under realistic conditions. And uh, as you can see, uh, it's not an equation. It's a system in which you have uh, several unknowns. One of them is the uh, velocity field, U, and the other one is the pressure, P, and can be used in order to describe the behavior of, uh, kind of, uh, of many kinds of, uh, of fluids that we find in the, in the nature in the, and also in, the, uh, in engineering. Uh, the atmosphere, uh, ocean uh, currents, uh, flows in canals uh, around obstacles, in general, what is called Newtonian fluids. This is a jet, a jet of the fluid that is uh, coming out of a tube. It is described by the Navier-Stokes equations. 
This is also described by the Navy Suez Commission. Uh, in, in this case, uh, we are speaking of the fluid uh, around an obstacle. Uh, and you can see, of course, that uh, this particularly, uh, it's something particularly, sorry, it's something particularly complex in this part of the, of the domain. This is also a fluid governed by Navy Stokes equations, the, sp uh, the flow of the, uh, of the air on the spacecraft. Uh, also, uh, you can describe the effect of the flow of the air uh, solved in dynamic structure equation in the domain like this, uh, and so on. So these are the equations, and uh, in the remainder of the talk, I will try not to write them. I will uh, instead uh, try to write the, in a abridged form uh, uh, the system. And, as I have said, uh, the unknowns, the, the, the solution of the system is given by the couple U and P, where U is the velocity field of the fluid. Uh, it is a function of uh, space and time, uh, in general, in the domain of R2 or R3, and during uh, time interval 0t. And P is the pressure that is also a function of space and time and uh, is combined in these uh, relations with the, uh, the velocity field in order to, uh, uh, to satisfy an equality uh, uh, that you can uh, already see that is nonlinear. Uh, the origin, uh, the physical origin of these equations uh, comes from uh, the considerations of the second Newton's law for the particles of the fluid together with an incompressibility condition. Uh, this equality says that the fluid is, uh, the particles of the fluids uh, satisfy uh, the well-known relation that uh, uh, mass times acceleration is equal to force. This is, uh, represents the force uh, applied to the fluid. And this uh, equality says that the fluid is incompressible. I mean that the volume occupied by a set of particles does not change with time. But uh, as I have said, I will try from now on uh, not to write the previous equation, but to conserve this uh, abbreviation in order to uh, uh, concentrate in the main ideas of the, uh, of the system. Usually, the Navier-Stokes equations are completed with the uh, initial and boundary conditions. The initial conditions mean that we have to say which are the values of u at the initial time, uh, t equal to zero, and the boundary conditions say what, which is the behavior of u, or something depending on u, on the boundary of the domain uh, occupied by the field. Well, the Navier-Stokes equations uh, were deduced after the work of many people. Among them, Newton, Euler, Navier, and Stokes. Uh, what, which is the, the contribution of each of them? Uh, in general terms, Newton described and modeled internal forces. Internal forces, also called viscous forces, are forces uh, that some particles apply to others. Euler was uh, the first to write the system, uh, the partial differential system, that uh, modeled uh, uh, the behavior of a fluid. Unfortunately, uh, the system that he wrote was incomplete. There were all the terms in Navier-Stokes equation except just the terms described by Newton, except the uh, uh, the, the, the viscous uh, forces term. Uh, anyway, the equations uh, written by Euler have uh, a lot of importance. They are called the Euler equations. And uh, it is admitted that they serve to describe the behavior of the fluid in under some circumstances. They can be viewed as an incomplete Navier-Stokes equations for which many interesting problems uh, both from the theoretical and the numerical uh, fields uh, are being studied today. And finally, Navier and Stokes, independently of each other, deduced and formulated the whole problem uh, a lot of uh, years ago. Uh, 
I have said that the Navistock sequences uh, describe the behavior of uh, fluid under many realistic circumstances. But uh, in fact, there are many fluids where the uh, molecular structure is sufficiently complicated uh, to discard the behavior of the uh, Navistock uh, uh, system. So there exist what is called non-Newtonian fluids, for example, uh, magma, blood, uh, industrial shampoos, all this, uh, that in fact do not obey uh, the Navistock sequences and need uh, a much more complicated analysis. I will not speak of non Newtonian fluids, uh, uh, but uh, let me uh, remember you that uh, this is a very important area of uh, uh, research nowadays. After the formulation of the Navier-Stokes uh, equation by Navier and Stokes, it was uh, suddenly realized that uh, almost no explicit solution is, uh, is at hand, uh, except in a very reduced uh, number of situations. We cannot compute uh, the, 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 the exact solution of the equations. So, uh, in order to understand the phenomena, it was necessary to uh, do something. And what has been done uh, has been uh, uh, to advance in two directions. In the theoretical uh, direction, with uh, theoretical analysis of the problem, and uh, in the numerical uh, uh, direction, with a lot of computations and a lot of uh, numerical methods uh, in order to compute uh, at least approximately uh, velocity fields and pressures. Uh, of course, this has led to uh, a lot of uh, advance in uh, both uh, uh, directions, in both senses. So we have uh, found the work of Ossine, Lere, Hop, uh, Jacques Louis and Pierre Louis Lyons, etc., that have contributed to the uh, good uh, understanding of distributions, uh, the use of uh, sublevel spaces, integral transforms, etc. And uh, on the other side, uh, initiated by von Neumann and uh, followed by all these people, Chorin, Fortin, uh, Globinski, Ranak, etc., we have found a lot of numerical um, uh, methods in order to uh, get the results. It is interesting to remember uh, a sentence by John Neumann in 1946, uh, in which he said that the machines, he, he thought that the machines were going to uh, produce uh, uh, numerical results with such a precision that uh, in a few years uh, the analysis, uh, the calculus, and even physical experiments uh, would be obsolete. Of course, this is not uh, true. Uh, there are still many things to do from the theoretical viewpoint, but it is uh, undoubted that the uh, numerical analysis nowadays is fundamental in order to understand the, 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 the behavior of uh, the fluid and the general circumstances. This is John Lerey. Lerey proved the existence of what he called turbulent solutions. Uh, nowadays, it is called weak solutions of the Navier-Stokes equations. And in fact, at the level of existence, uniqueness, and regularity, not much more is known nowadays. Uh, he deduced this in the 30s, uh, the uh, last century. So, uh, as you can see, almost uh, 100 years uh, uh, later, mm, we do not have advanced uh, uh, much in, in from this. This is John von Neumann. Von Neumann is considered the father of the computational fluid mechanics, uh, fluid dynamics. Unfortunately, he passed away too soon, and just before uh, the beginning of the uh, great advances in uh, informatics and uh, numerics, and beginning uh, be before the arrival of supercomputation, parallel calculus, and all this. Uh, and uh, due to this, uh, he could not, uh, he could not uh, uh, profit from the uh, advances that we uh, now ha uh, have in, in, in order to get uh, a good understanding of the situations. 
Well, if we speak of the analysis of the stokes equations, I think that we have to speak also of uh, Olga Lysenskaya. Olga Lysenskaya is uh, one of the great names in the uh, 20th century, uh, 20th century uh, in especially in the uh, uh, field of uh, partial differential equations and uh, related areas. Uh, her contributions to not only this uh, field, but ma many others, uh, probably uh, uh, would have deserved uh, to be the first female field medallist, uh, unfortunately ignored by the International Mathematical Union at the, at the, at the time. Uh, he was also uh, surrounded by uh, personal difficulties in the years, and uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, not uh, always recognized by us. Uh, in, in order to uh, in order to point uh, her contributions and her achievements in the, the field, uh, let me say some words on, on her works. Uh, she was the first to understand the relevance of these inequalities, these interpolation inequalities. These are some uh, particular kinds of what is called nowadays uh, Gagliardo Nirenberg inequalities. Uh, the norm in L4 of a function, the regular function V, is bounded by, is limited by this uh, product. In the case uh, n equal to 2, if V is defined in two dimensional domain. And uh, contrarily, it's bounded by this uh, other product in the case n equal to 3. And she was the first, in fact, to uh, realize that this. Uh, two inequalities make the difference between the two-dimensional and the three-dimensional analysis of the Navier-Stokes equation. She was also the first to consider the notion of attractor for an infinite dimensional dynamic system, uh, and uh, also the, 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 the first to explore alternative uh, fluid models, different from the Navier-Stokes equations. Both things uh, uh, probably with uh, an intention to uh, get a good approach, a rigorous approach to turbulence. So this was the first key word, Navier-Stokes equations. The second key word in this talk is control. What is to control a system? Well, usually when we find a, a system of some kind, a differential system, an algebraic uh, linear or nonlinear system, uh, and yes, uh, we uh, analyze the existence of the solutions. We try to see if there is one or several solutions. Uh, in many cases, we if, if it is possible, we uh, study the regularity of the solutions, etc. In the control theory uh, area, we try to go beyond. We do the following. We fix the data. The data is called V here, and uh, we fix the data in such a way that uh, uh, the solution, we try to fix the data V in such a way that the solution Y satisfies good properties. So the viewpoint of control is to choose the data that make uh, good properties for the solution of the system. Uh, in control theory, the data is called a control and it's supposed to vary in space, u, and the solution of the system, the associated solution of the system, is called the state. And uh, in this case, it is a function of time which goes to, uh, from zero to t, to capital T, and takes values in another space, uh, capital H, which is uh, usually known as the state space. And there are two classical approaches for a uh, control problem of this kind. Optimal control and controllability. In the first approach, optimal control, the main idea, the main goal is to find the control V such that the couple Vy minimizes a cost function, a cost function J that depends on uh, both things. Uh, this has to be interpreted as uh, trying to find the data, the control that uh, minimize uh, the cost that we have, uh, in fact, to pay in order to put it in hand, in order to make him work in the system. 
And the second uh, classical approach to uh, control problem is uh, controllability. Uh, the idea of controllability is different from the idea of optimal control. Now we try to find the control V such that the associated state uh, is such that R of, v, uh, R of Y of the associated state takes a uh, desired value or belongs to a desired uh, set with R, another mapping from U to Z. For instance, we can take R of Y equal to Y at capital T, and then we are trying to find V such that Y of capital T is equal to a desired state. So we have two approaches, optimal control and controllability, and uh, depending on the case, with one of the approaches of the other, we try to solve the control problem and to uh, get good results for the solution of the system. This is Maxwell. Uh, control problems uh, appeared in the history since many years. Uh, many uh, uh, classical uh, uh, advances in science and can be uh, viewed as uh, uh, control problems and the solution to control problems, but this was the first to uh, formulate rigorously uh, control problems. There is a, a pioneering paper uh, entitled On Governance, which was uh, published in the Proceeding of the Royal Society, in which we can find the first rigorous formulation and the first structural analysis of a control problem, uh, motivated in this case by the optimization of steam engines. Uh, in this uh, paper, Maxwell considered wh what we call centrifugal governors. For him, a governor is a control. Is what, what we, uh, we, 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 we call now, nowadays a control. A centrifugal co governor, uh, for him, uh, lead uh, in a very national way to the uh, notion of feedback. Uh, what is feedback? Feedback is uh, the property by means of which we are trying to find the solution V of an optimal control, uh, observing which is the, the by observing the which is the state that is produced. And uh, so the the first formulation of control problems and the first uh, time we find the feedback idea in a control problem, in an optimal control problem, uh, is in this paper uh, by Maxwell. And this was, of course, the beginning of a long story of success uh, in the area. This is an example of application uh, of control problem, the control diabetes. Diabetes is the excess of high blood sh uh, sugar for absence of uh, insulin in the, in the body. It is not curable. Uh, diabetic people uh, have to uh, support the, the, the illness uh, all their life. But it's controllable. It is controllable by uh, applying a regular exercise, diet plans, etc. So the way you have to regulate the exercise and you have to planify uh, diets and all this. The way you have to uh, uh, plan all this is a typical control problem. This has to be, uh, can be written as uh, a control problem of the kind that uh, we have uh, seen before. A second example of control problem, also related to medicine, is the determination of optimal radiotherapy th strategies. Nowadays, it is possible to model the behavior of a tumor with partial differential equations. It is well known that the many models uh, give very accurate uh, results in this, uh, uh, in this kind of problems. And it is also possible to model the effect uh, produced by a radiotherapy uh, strategy. So the determination of the optimality here uh, leads to a very natural control problems. Where do we have to apply the, 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 the radiation? Which doses are appropriate? How long, etc. And this is another 
third, uh, still not very explored uh, example of application of control problems, that concerns nanotherapy strategies. This is very interesting from the uh, applied viewpoint. Uh, it has been uh, it has been seen that uh, have been noticed that the standard therapy drugs cannot always reach the cancer cells because there are barriers. And these barriers can be overpassed if the drugs are encapsulated in microscopic particles, also called nanoparticles, because in this case, the particles are able to pass the barriers to reach the cancer cells and to act so quickly that the cancer cells have no time to react and instantaneously die. So this is a very uh, uh, effective uh, way to, uh, uh, to fight against uh, uh, the cancer. And uh, it is something that is uh, now being explored from the uh, biological, uh, biological and uh, me 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 medicine uh, viewpoints and also from the mathematical viewpoint. A uh, very natural control problem here is uh, how to do all this where and how nanoparticles must be placed in order to attack in an optimal way the, uh, the cancer. So we have, as I have said, two ideas, two key uh, words, uh, Navistox equations and control uh, problems. And now I'm trying to uh, see why do we need to control, why and where do we need to control in relation uh, with which uh, kind of problems uh, and uh, related partial visual equations and what for. Well, I, I'm going to give three reasons. Uh, there are many more, but three reasons uh, by which I think that the it is interesting to control uh, the Navier-Stokes stokes equations. The first one is in order to solve what is called optimum design problems. Okay, this is the classical formulation of uh, an optimum design problem for the Navier-Stokes equations. We ask U and P to solve the system in a set of this kind, omega minus D times zero T, and we want to determine D, we want to determine D in order to get good properties. For instance, in order to get a couple UP such that uh, the drag of the resistance to the passage of the fluid is minimized or something of this kind, uh, another uh, uh, reason of this kind. Uh, so here the control is D, it's a part of the domain. If we view D as an obstacle to the passage of the, of the fluid, uh, this is an optimum design problem in the sense that we are trying to design uh, the, the, the open set omega minus d uh, in an optimal way. Uh, for example, this is the result of an optimal design problem where we are optimizing an, uh, an aerodynamic banner in order to get a good sailing of the, uh, uh, of the boat. This is another uh, result for an optimized uh, uh, cyclist uh, helmet. This is another one. This is uh, an idealized and at the same time optimized uh, aircraft, etc. This is the first reason by which it is interesting to consider control problems for the navier stokes equation. The second reason. There are other kinds of uh, problems, or control problems that appear in connection to the navier stokes that can be uh, uh, classified in uh, a group of insulating suction problems where what we want to uh, de de decide is which is the boundary condition, H, the boundary data, excuse me, the boundary data we have to put here on the boundary of omega in order to get good properties for U. Uh, this is what is called a boundary control problem. And uh, repeating the same interpretation as before, why not? 
for example, in many situations, uh, suction or insulating uh, fluid uh, applied uh, through H would be able to minimize drag or other properties, other desired properties of the fluid. This is an example of application of uh, boundary uh, uh, optimal control, uh, where, as you see, uh, through what is called voltage generation uh, uh, points, we are able to stabilize and to control the fluid uh, near wing. Uh, without this control voxes uh, uh, generation points, uh, the, 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 the layer of the fluid that is near the wing separates at a given point, and if the inclination of the wind is uh, uh, extremely high, then the, the fluid uh, becomes completely ungovernable. Uh, ungovernable. Uh, contrarily to the case in which we are uh, attaching uh, the streamlines to the to the surface of the wind through uh, the action of control. A third reason, a third interesting reason uh, that I'm going to give in order to, uh, uh, to justify the control of uh, Navistock sequential is uh, contamination, minimizing contamination. Uh, an acceptable model for uh, contamination is uh, something like the Navistock system coupled to another equation. Here, psi, which is a new variable, uh, can be viewed, can be interpreted as the contamination de density function. It measures the, the, the danger of a contamination and uh, is a, a, a appears here as a force term in Navier-Stokes equation and is coupled with U and P through another transport equation of the same kind of Navier-Stokes, E3 of uh, Psi U, uh, that I have uh, written here. So this is an acceptable model for contamination and uh, an acceptable control problem for, uh, uh, f for contamination is just to find V, to find the control V, such that the solution of this uh, system satisfies this property, size small in some sense, at capital T. Uh, this is what is called a Businesque-like problem, in which we find the Navier-Stokes equation coupled with an additional equation for an additional variable. Uh, we will find this system later in, uh, in one of the problems that I'm going to present, and uh, so this is not uh, the unique uh, time we are the we're going to see it in the talk. Uh, and uh, here it is, uh, uh, as I have said, an acceptable, uh, good model, uh, sufficiently accurate model for describing contamina contamination. A very serious problem nowadays is the generation of plastic islands in the ocean. This is really a problem. As you already know, the trash is accumulating in uh, five uh, enormous uh, garbage uh, uh, patches uh, around the world. The largest of them is the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, the so-called Great Pacific Garbage Patch, which is located between Hawaii and California, and whose surface is about three times the surface of France. So uh, we have a problem of contamination there, a uh, serious problem of contamination. Uh, very recently, a uh, uh, proposed solution uh, has been uh, started to, 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 to put in hand. Uh, it is called the Ocean Cleanup System 001. And uh, it consists of a flexible structure of 600 meters long, that intends to surround the plastic island and push trash uh, to appropriate uh, strategic points where later the trash is picked up uh, from uh, some boats and transported uh, and uh, adequately handled. This is the plan, uh, the mission plan of the uh, ocean cleanup 
And uh, as you see, uh, the idea is to surround the trash in order to control the, 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 the uh, first to control the motion of the, uh, of the contaminated particles and then to uh, pick them uh, to another place. Many uh, questions related to the uh, behavior of this uh, ocean cleanup, uh, in fact, are control questions. Where do we begin the operations? Uh, which is the shape that has to take the uh, ocean cleanup in order to do all this uh, in an optimized, optimized way? Uh, which have to be which have, have to be the accumulation points, the strategic points where we uh, push uh, uh, the, touch, the trash, etc. All these questions uh, uh, are, in fact, questions that can be solved by solving appropriate control points for the uh, model that I have shown before, in which uh, the, the, the fluid is the ocean and the uh, measure of... Uh, uh, of contamination is the density of uh, uh, plastic particles. So I'm going now to present, uh, as I have said, the two problems, two not so standard problems, uh, uh, control problems for the Navier-Stokes equations, uh, where we have recently obtained some results. And uh, I will uh, end the talk with these uh, uh uh, results that I uh, think that are a little bit more technical, but uh, uh, I expect that the uh, sufficiently uh, understandable for by by, by all of you. Uh, in first, I'm going to consider a bioobjective control problem in order to uh, show you that uh, something not so uh, classical, not so standard, can be still be done. Uh, been done uh, in this area. Uh, for simplicity, I'm going to simplify. Uh, I'm going to consider only stationary problems. Uh, I'm going to assume that U and P, both of them, are independent of time. So the system uh, simplifies a little. And uh, we find uh, that U and P have to solve an equation in an, op uh, an open set omega of uh, two or three and uh, an incompressibility condition in, uh, in the same set. And we are going to assume that uh, F is the control, F is a force, uh, and the force is limited to a small domain, little omega, uh, where we can act. Usually, uh, as I have uh, shown before, for a classical optimal control problem, we introduce a cost function, we introduce one cost function, and we try to find f such that the couple u and f minimize this cost function. Here I'm going to consider something a little bit more complicated. I'm going to introduce two cost functions. I'm going to call them j i and j j1 and j2. Uh, I'm going to consider the problem in which we try to make at the same time J1 and J2 small. Because maybe my interest is not only to uh, get one of them small, but both of them. Uh, here I have fixed a set O1, uh, uh, sorry, o I have fixed two sets, O1 and O2, and two desired functions, U1D and U2D that can be viewed as the side states. And what I'm trying to do here is to get uh, small results of this expression. Small results of this expression mean at the same time that f is not enormous, uh, f is not uh, very large, and that u is not very far from uid. So uh, what we want to get is a control f that is not very large, and at the same time, make u similar to u1d in O1 and similar to u2d in, U in O2. Uh, we, have to, we have to give a, a meaning to this because uh, they 
they can be uh, contradictory uh, uh, objectives. So the goal is to find an equilibrium. Yeah? An equilibrium. Yeah. The goal is to find uh, an F that uh, leads to an equilibrium. And I have chosen here uh, one kind of equilibrium. Uh, equilibrium, uh, the so-called Pareto equilibrium. Uh, so the goal here is going to be to find an F such that uh, F together with uh, uh, an associated state U is a Pareto equilibrium for J1, J2, which means that there is no other, there is no other couple, Y, W, that improves the values of J1 and J2 at the same time with at least one strict inequality here. This is what, they call, what is called the Pareto equilibrium for, 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 for the couple uh, J1 and J2, and this is the goal of the by objective control problem that I'm considering here. Well, this is a difficult problem. This, uh, there are several non-trivial difficulties here. Uh, first, because uh, we are considering non-convex functions, J1 and J2, and this is due of the non-linearity of the, of the equation, of course. And then, because in general, in general, we cannot affirm that for each f there exists a unique solution of this system. In general, it is not known whether or not uh, each f that is uh, uh, used here in a reasonable space leads to a uniqueness of the solution of the system. Uh, this is one of the great uh, uh, major problems in Nav for Navier-Stokes. So uh, we uh, don't have uniqueness of the mapping to uh, that to which f associated the solution, and this is a serious difficulty in order to apply the standard calculus of variation techniques to this problem. Uh, we have to work uh, uh, deeply in, the, in this problem in order to look uh, at the nature of the problem in order to solve uh, so, uh, uh, really the, the, the in, a, in an acceptable way the, the situation. Well, recently we have got some results uh, with uh, a doctoral stu student, Irene Maringaite, uh, where uh, first we have found that the, there exists a whole family of Pareto equilibria, uh, which is indicated here by, by a parameter alpha, which moves in the interval 0, 1. And uh, also that they can be characterized uh, by appropriate optimality conditions. Uh, optimality systems, sorry. Uh, as I have said, uh, it is not standard to get these results because uh, usual techniques uh, do not work here. And uh, the idea was to look for minimizers of a convex combination of uh, J1 and J2 uh, and to find that the uh, minimizing problem corresponding to a function of this kind uh, possess uh, solution. And then, in order to get uh, the uh, characterization of the solution, to apply what is called the dubovsky milutin uh, formalism, that is a technique that serves to solve problems, and more other things, problems of this kind. And another thing that we have done is to uh, design uh, a good uh, convergence algorithms for this computation of the computation of the solution of the problem. Uh, let me uh, show you very briefly the results of an, ex uh, an experiment, a numerical experiment. This is the domain. This is the domain. Uh, this is a. Uh, we are I'm considering here an academic problem, which the the the, the equation is two-dimensional. The domain is a large uh, rectangle uh, with this uh, small rectangle aside. Uh, uh, this is wh what is in uh, green is O1. This is the domain when where we want to take uh, to have U uh, similar to U1D and uh, this is O2. So this is the domain where we have to, 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 to have U similar to U2D. And this is the control domain. I am going to apply a force just here in this small part of the global domain. Well, this was a first uh, rough 
the first rough uh, triangulation that I have used for preliminary computations. Later, we have worked with a uh, larger number of nodes and triangles, as we are going to see. These are U1T and U2D. Uh, this is the desired state, the U1D and O1, which was this uh, part of the domain. And U2D is equal to zero. So we want, in the end, we want uh, to apply a force, F, such that we have in this part of the domain something similar to this, which is a rotating fluid. And in this part of the domain, we have uh, the desire to find u equal to zero. We want uh, uh, rest of this kind. That's this part. And with this, uh, this is what we get. Uh, of course, we cannot get exactly these uh, uh, desired states because they are contradictory. And uh, uh, if u satisfies the dynamic stokes equations, but we are able to compute uh, a Pareto equilibrium. A Pareto equilibrium for uh, the parameter alpha equal to uh, 0 0.5 uh, is described by this uh, uh, velocity field. This is what we call the associated uh, adjoint uh, field that is part of the optimality system uh, that can be written for the uh, optimal solution. And this is the uh, control that we have to apply on the left part of the domain in order to get uh, this uh, velocity field. So uh, it is possible to find this, uh, for example, using a Newton-like uh, method for the optimality system. And uh, this is uh, relatively uh, precise uh, with the number of nodes uh, much higher than the, the one we have seen before, and the number of triangles uh, also uh, uh, higher. I'm going now to present another problem, a second problem that concerns controllability. This is Jack Williams. Uh, controllability and Navi Stokes are uh, intimately uh, uh, linked to uh, Jack Williams. Lyons is the main responsible of the symbiosis of pure and applied mathematics, first in France and then in the neighboring uh, space, uh, uh, nations, in the neighboring uh, uh, states, uh, in particular in Spain. Uh, in the origin, he was a pure mathematician, but uh, he dedicated a lot of effort in order to push pure mathematicians to work in applied problems and to contribute to applied science. And at the same time, he pushed applied mathematic mathematicians to uh, work with the good uh, and uh, high, uh, uh, high level uh, mathematics. And he got, he got it because he was able at the same time to uh, make people like uh, uh, Brazis, uh, or so on, to uh, increase their interest for uh, applications and uh, make people like uh, Cierle or Rabia to formalize uh, numerics and formalize the, uh, the, the, the usage of uh, uh, numerical methods in, uh, uh, in the solution of uh, uh, partial differential equations and, and so on. He contributed in particular to the analysis and control of the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, he formulated a conjecture in the 90s that is still unsolved, and I'm going to show it uh, now, a version of it, uh, and has uh, led to a lot of work uh, during these decades. Uh, let us consider an, op uh, an open problem who, who which has uh, origin in uh, Lyons. We are going to consider the Businex system. I remember you that the Businex system was the Navier-Stokes coupled to another equation, a heat-like equation for an additional variable. Uh, this is the Businex system in which the uh, additional variable is called here theta, and not psi as uh, before. Uh, I call it theta because I want to interpret theta as a temperature. So. Uh, this is the businesque like system. And I'm going to consider this system in a cube. Right, in a cube, omega of R3. 
And uh, my control problem is going to be now the following. We want to find boundary data for u and theta, boundary data for u and theta, vanishing on one face, just one face, such that at the end of the story, at time t equal to capital T, which is the end of the evolution of the system, u is equal to zero and theta is equal to zero. This is the problem. This is what we call a null controllability problem because uh, we, we, we want to drive the field U and also the temperature theta uh, to zero. Uh, U in particular uh, is decided to be driving to rest, acting on one part or uh, five faces, uh, not six, uh, of the boundary of the boundary of the cube. This is open, this problem is open. As I have said, since the 90s, it was conjectured by uh, Jack Rillion that the answer is yes, that we can find boundary data that, uh, that do this job. But for the moment, it is uh, an open problem, even in the case of the Navier-Stokes equations. Uh, even in the case of the Navier-Stokes equations. However, partial results, many partial results have been obtained for this problem and uh, many related problems. Uh, they, have, they are due to uh, a lot of people, uh, some of them are here, but uh, there are many more. Uh, Fulsikov, Immanuilov, uh, Jean-Michel Coron, Frédéric Marbach, uh, etc. Uh, but for the moment, uh, the problem is open. So recently, we have uh, obtained something that does not give a uh, definitive answer to the problem, but uh, it is, in my opinion, a good uh, 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 partial uh, response to it. Uh, in collaboration with uh, Juan Limerke and Dani Nina, that is a, a doctoral st uh, student. In fact, he has uh, defended his thesis uh, last week in, uh, in Niteroi, in, uh, in Brazil. Uh, uh, in cooperation with them, we have got the following result. There exists a uh, family uh, sequence F epsilon, G epsilon of forces that we can put here and here, uh, a sequence of forces that converge to zero in an appropriate, appropriate sense, that converge to zero in an appropriate sense, such that for each of these problems, the answer is yes. I mean, for each of these problems, when I put F epsilon and G epsilon here, we are able to find boundary data such that at the end of the time interval, at capital T, U is equal to zero and theta is equal to zero. Uh, this is the result. So uh, we are not able to solve the null controllability problem for this system, but we are able to solve the controllability problem for systems that look like this one, uh, except that they introduce uh, small terms here, f epsilon and g epsilon on the right-hand sides of the equations. Okay. So uh, I'm going to finish with two comments. Uh, the first comment is that proof is inspired in uh, some previous works uh, from. Uh, uh, Jean-Michel Coron and also from uh, Guerrero Emanuel Puels, uh, in which uh, the idea is to uh, linearize the solution, uh, but not linearize at zero, but linearize along a well-chosen uh, trajectory and uh, take profit of the linearization, take profit of the result that uh, already that are already known for linear problems and uh, apply them uh, in the context. In fact, in fact, the proof is constructive. I mean, uh, uh, we construct explicitly f epsilon and g epsilon in order to get the desired result here. Uh, we proceed uh, by steps and in a given step we uh, give the expression f epsilon and g epsilon that serves to go to, to to, to get the result. And uh, the last comment is that uh, at present, unfortunately, we have no estimate for the boundary data that we have to put here. Uh, look at this. Uh, 
if we had an estimate, a good estimate here for the boundary data, if we had this, then we would be able to pass to the limit as epsilon goes to zero, because we know that the right-hand side goes to zero. And unfortunately, it seems at present that uh, in order to get the result for a system like this, at the same time as f epsilon and j epsilon go to zero, the boundary data that we have to put for u and theta, the control that we have to use, uh, increases and increases. And uh, this is a difficulty in order to pass to the limit, so we have not a definitive answer for the uh, original problem. But we are working on it. This is a uh, work in, prof in progress, and uh, maybe uh, someday uh, we will be able uh, to get something. The same situation appears for the Navier-Stokes equation. Eh? I have uh, uh, presented here the result in order to show you that uh, for the contamination problem that we saw uh, before, and also for uh, an interpretation in of theta in, in terms of temperature, uh, the result is possible. But uh, the same situation, uh, unfortunately, uh, appears in the case of the Navier-Stokes equation. So thank you very much. Uh, and so so thank you very much uh, enrique so any question or comment yes and the for the two d name starts creation if the external force it depends on the time and how to defines the equilibrium. I mean the external force, or F, is depend on time t, and how to define the equilibrium. Equilibrium? Yes. Uh. That means the steady state uh, elliptic equation. Excuse me, I, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, I mean, the, if uh, time uh, Vanish the Navier Stokes equation reduced to the Stokes problem, yes? And if F d is uh, depend on time t, how ah, to define okay, the. Okay, I understand. Okay, yes, ah, you're right. Yes, uh, this is interesting. Uh, uh, we, have considering, we have been considering here, for example, for the Businex system, or also for the Navier Stokes equation, null controllability problems. Null controllability problems. But maybe it is easier not to try to uh, lead u to zero, but to another trajectory. I mean, uh, the situation can be maybe uh, uh, more uh, comfortable if instead of trying to make u equal to zero at capital T, to make u equal to u bar of t, where u bar is another solution. Uh, this is the situation. So for these kind of problems, it is equivalent. It is not uh, uh, what, we, what is known. What is known uh, at a given moment uh, is first that if we start sufficiently near the trajectory, sufficiently near u bar, then we get controls that make the job and uh, drive the, 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 the solution exactly to u bar of t. This is possible. If we start from a point that is sufficiently near. This is what is called uh, local controllability to the trajectories, yeah, exact controllability to the trajectories. And in the case of uh, uh, the global result that I have shown here, in which we want to control this to zero, independently of the uh, initial uh, size of the, uh, of the solution, of the, of the, of the data, uh, it is also possible to get, it is also possible to get uh, a global result concerning the trajectories concerning the, if we fix a sufficiently smooth trajectory and we assume that it exists. So, uh, uh, via a uh, change of variables, uh, not uh, too complicated change of variables, we can rewrite the problem always as a null controllability problem, so more or less the same kind of results apply. And uh, for the positive equation, and the second uh, equation is describes the, uh, the conservation law of the derivative of uh, temperature. And uh, here you add uh, g epsilon to the second uh, equation. What's the meaning? Uh, I mean for the positive equation. Here? 
In this case, or the, uh, you mean in this case? Uh, yeah, next, next. Yes, for the circuit, uh, circuit equations, you add uh, G epsilon to the uh, E3. The, the third uh, equation for the, for the both equation. Uh, so I, uh, you speak of the region uh, where F epsilon and G epsilon? Yes, you add G epsilon. What's oh. the G epsilon means? Ah, okay. G epsilon is, uh, can be interpreted as a, a heat source. A heat source. I mean, uh, if you interpret U as a velocity field and P as a pressure, then what you put here is a force. This is a force. And if you interpret theta as a temperature, this is a heat equation, in fact, uh, with the transport term. So G epsilon is a heat source. So you are putting a force here, and you are putting a heat source. You are uh, insulating uh, flux of, uh, of heat, uh, heat flux, uh, in, the, in the body in order to get the result. So uh, you have to, to perform a, a mechanical action here, epsilon, and a thermo thermodynamical uh, action here. You have to, in, uh, uh, to apply heat uh, in order to get the result. But they are small uh, uh, functions. I mean, what you are applying is very small. You are wasting uh, not much energy in order to get uh, the result. Heat. Heat. Okay. Thank you very much. Any, any more questions? So we may uh, thank again uh, our speaker, Enrique. Thank you. <laughs> and now we, we move out to the, the other building. We are going to have a coffee break there and then continue with the special sessions. Okay? So.